In this tutorial, I'm gonna cover a handful of the 3D channel effects. And these specific effects are meant to work with specific types of 3D formats. And those formats are RLA, RPF, PIC or ZPIC, and EI or EIZ. All of these image formats come from 3D software and are multi-layer files, just like a PSD can be. But each one of those layers contains information that you specify in the 3D software. It could be a luma mat, a depth map, different passes of your 3D render like lighting, reflections, ambient occlusion. And the reality is if you're doing this kind of 3D work with these file formats, then you probably don't need my explanation. If you are coming to this video for a good explanation of these effects, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize ahead of time because I do not have experience with these file formats and I primarily work in Cinema 4D, which as far as I can tell, isn't really set up well to work with these file formats. EXR is a format that I'm more familiar with that does does basically the same kind of thing, and the extractor effect works with that file format between Cinema 4D and After Effects really well. Now, I didn't do a ton of research on this, but I'm pretty sure these 3D channel effects are fairly old, and these file formats are not all that common today. So they're likely just still here to be compatible with older projects or for people who use these formats still and enjoy using them and get the job done with these effects. But again, from what I can tell, there are newer file formats and better effects for doing basically everything that these effects will do. But with all of that out of the way, let's actually talk about the effects that we're gonna cover in this video. I rendered out this single frame in Cinema 4D as an RPF. And if we go to this first effect called 3D Channel Extract and apply it to the layer, it defaults to displaying the 3D channel of Z depth. That's the first one in the list. Z depth is a depth map that we can use to apply artificial depth of field right here in After Effects. Now I need to adjust the black and white point to actually see this, so let me dial back my black point, and there we go, now we're seeing some information. As I understand it, Cinema 4D treats the depth map basically inverted from every other piece of 3D software, so that's why I had to move my black point to a negative value. But basically what I wanna do is make the background, the thing that's furthest from the camera, black, and the thing closest to the camera, white. So I've extracted that 3D channel from my RPF render. Now what I could do is rename this depth, duplicate it, and then name this one beauty. And then I could blur this layer based on this depth map. So I have the Frischluft Lens Care plugin set. So I'm gonna use FL Depth of Field, apply that to the beauty pass, select my depth layer with effects and masks as that pass, and then increase my blur radius. Then I could choose any one of these forks or knives as the focal point and everything else will be blurred around it. And this effect specifically does a really great job of artificial depth of field. So that's one use of this 3D channel extract effect, but I could also change this to any number of different layer passes. And like I said, I'm not experienced with this file format and I actually couldn't get any of these other ones to work. I know what they're supposed to do. And again, if you're working with 3D, then you likely know what they're supposed to do as well. But like I said, I couldn't get any of these to work. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing wrong. But there are a few other controls that we have and they change depending on what pass we're looking at, including inverting the depth map, if that's something that you needed. All right, let's take a look at another one of these effects. This one right here called depth of field does basically the same thing as what I just set up, but in a single effect. There are just not nearly as many controls with this depth of field effect as there are with the Frischluft depth of field effect. But if I apply that to my RPF and I zoom in here so we can see this foreground fork really clearly, and I increase the maximum radius, and I'm pretty sure I just found a typo in this effect, go figure, everything gets blurry. But if I increase my focal plane thickness, then we're going to isolate the focus to a single spot. So let me turn that maximum radius down a little bit so it's not so crazy blurry. And I could even adjust the focal plane, again, shifting that focused point to shift the focus back here rather than in the foreground. So increasing or decreasing that focal plane thickness is basically like the aperture on a camera lens. And then that focal bias is basically how quickly objects past that focal plane start to fall out of focus. It's a very basic effect. It doesn't produce the nicest looking depth of field. And honestly, the built-in camera lens blur effect can use a depth map and gives you much more control than the depth of field effect on its own. Okay, I'll delete that depth of field and then pull out the depth mat effect. And what this effect does is uses that same depth pass that I used to blur out the image and instead creates a mat for the layer. So if I back this depth up, you can see that it's trimming off anything further away than this fork right here. So I can push this back as far as I want and it will reveal more and more of the scene based on its distance to the camera. Now, if I put it right about here and I go to the next option, feather, I could increase or decrease that and it'll smooth it out. 
And I could also invert that mat. So instead of revealing those objects, it's hiding them. But that's it for the depth mat effect. The next effect in the list is Fog 3D. If I apply that to my layer, again, it's using that Z depth pass, but this time applying fog to the image. So if I back this up, you can see that it's procedurally applying this basically fill of color, which I can choose right here to the objects. So if I put the start depth back here and I maybe pulled an end depth forward a little bit, I can really isolate this to wherever I want. So actually, if I reverse these two numbers, then it's going to be more realistic. I want the fog to be in the background, not in the foreground. So I'm going to just back that up to about there so that my background is completely white. And now there's this nice fall off between the foreground and background elements. I could turn that fog opacity down so it's not completely eliminating my background. Or maybe I could sample the background color and now it's just kind of fading out into this colored void. I can increase or decrease the scattering density, which just makes that fog thicker or thinner. And then we have this foggy background checkbox, which I have not been able to figure out exactly what that does. In the After Effects user guide, it says that it creates a foggy background. And that if you deselect it, it will create transparency at the back of the 3D scene for compositing on top of another layer. So in my mind, if I would have brought out that depth mat before the fog 3D effect and turned that depth back a little bit, then having that checked would have still produced a foggy background. Unchecking it would preserve the transparency but that's clearly not what is happening. So I really don't know exactly what that checkbox is supposed to do. Next up is gradient layer. And to use that, I'm actually going to need a new layer. So I'm gonna make a new solid and I'll call this noise and I'll apply a turbulent noise effect to it. Now I just have some random grayscale values that I can use on this map. I'll choose that as my gradient layer and make sure to choose effects and masks. And then I need to increase that layer contribution to influence the fog. And it doesn't really look like anything changed, but if I zoom in nice and close to some of these objects that are more in the fog and then go to my noise and increase the contrast, it's shaping the fog a little bit. So certain points are foggier than others. This is basically adding depth to the fog. So it's not just 100% uniform. So this is what my noise layer looks like and this is how it's affecting the fog. All right, I'm gonna delete that, get rid of this effect and take a look at another one of these 3D channel effects. ID Matte allows you to create a matte, just like the 3D channel extract from an object or material ID. And you can choose your ID selector right here and even feather out the result after it's been selected. You can invert that matte and use coverage. Now, none of this is working on my render because I couldn't get object or material IDs to work out of Cinema 4D with the RPF format. But if I were to bring out this 3D channel extract and change it to coverage, then we're gonna see this kind of outlined find edges view of our layer. And this is what the use coverage checkbox is looking at. What it's going to do, if this was working properly, is make cleaner mats of overlapping objects. So this fork right here is overlapping many other forks and spoons behind it and using that coverage as part of the mat will basically remove any color information from those background objects. Okay, so that's it for the 3D channel effects that support just these specific 3D formats. I do apologize again for not really having much experience with these formats, but I hope that I at least gave you a basic overview of what they're supposed to do. And if you know how to get an RPF out of Cinema 4D with all of this information intact, be sure to leave a comment and I'll pin it as the top comment as a resource for anyone looking for that information. But that's all for these 3D channel effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.